Hello, my name is Father Jeff, and I'm standing here at the altar of St. Michael's Church. Today, what I want to talk about is the things you see on the altar. I have the altar set up just like it would be for the Eucharistic prayer during our Sunday Masses. When we come to celebrate the Eucharist, the bread and wine becoming the body and blood of Jesus. If you've been here before, you've seen this set up on the altar, but we don't have to talk about what it is, why all these things are here, but they each serve a purpose. For instance, starting on your right, we have the Roman Missal here. It is the book that contains all the prayers we use at Mass. Every prayer said at Mass can be found in that book. Everything but the readings and the homily for the entire Mass can be found in that book. The readings are in the book we call the lectionary, or for the Gospel, the book of the Gospels. This contains all the prayers prescribed for each Sunday, each Saint Day, the Eucharistic prayers, penitential rites, Gloria, Creed, it's all in here. Of course, underneath it is something purely practical. The book stand, it tips the book up, and this serves one purpose. It helps me with my um, bifocals to see the words on the page. So sometimes things just are practical. But the book is there to help guide the priest, to say the right things, to celebrate the Mass with great solemnity. Looking at other things we use, we have things like our pet. This is the vessel that is used to hold the host that the priest will consecrate. It will hold the big host that he will hold up there in the prayers. It will also likely hold some smaller host, numbers depending on how many are in the consecration are in the congregation. We call this a patent. Then also to hold more host as needed, we have these two ciboria to hold the bread that will be consecrated as the body of Christ. Then we have the chalice. Not just a cup, but a chalice signifying great solemnity because we're putting the wine in it that will become the body and blood of Christ. As you look at the patent, the chalice, the ciborium, and then we have more chalices. Each church will have whatever number they need for their distribution of the precious blood. But each of them are made of solid metal to be a durable su substance. So we don't have to worry about it breaking during Mass or getting cracked and that. And often they are gold color, signifying value. But as valuable as gold can be in our world today, what they hold, the bread and wine, will become something that is priceless. The body and blood of Jesus. So again, precious materials. Something worthy of holding the body and blood of Christ. Then we have other items. Obviously, we have to have wine to consecrate. So we have, it can be, if you need a lot of wine, a larger pitcher. Or if you're just using a little wine, say for daily mass, it'll be a small cruet. And we'll also have a cruet here with water in it. The water that's used to pour into the chalice pour a drop of water in The water that's used to wash the priest's hands and to offer to him. So again, a cruet. Then we have purificators. These are where used when someone receives the precious blood and the side is white. Purificators. But don't, they're not some raggedy cloth. They're white, symbolizing purity, symbolizing God's graces. And notice they're neatly folded. And they're even ironed to show put effort into realizing they're being used for a special purpose. Ironed to look neatly. I mean, so blessed to have some a lady in the parish who washes these and irons them for us. So they look good. Because if I ironed them, they probably wouldn't look so good. So purificators used to wipe the side of the chalice. And then as I move the chalice and the ciborium, 
off. You'll see here in the center um, this cloth. And I'm going to pull up here right, to get everything off it. This is called a corporal. And it's here to contain the precious elements. You know, there's already an altar cloth that you can see on the, on the altar to serve, to make it a dignified place. You know, if you get in your home, if, if you're just eating yourself, you might eat with that tablecloth. When you hold a special meal, you, know, you might decorate it up and all with a special cloth. And we are celebrating a very special meal, you know, the Eucharist, where we are fed with the body and blood of Jesus. So we have the altar cloth. But then this corporal, say for instance, I'm doing the consecration and then we come to communion, the Lamb of God, and then I break the host, and sometimes crumbs. I do my best to you know, break it over the pit so the crumbs will fall into the pit. But sometimes they fall off. So with the corporal there, you know, if the crumbs are in it, we can neatly fold it up pick it up, containing any particles that are there, and then properly and reverently take care of them after Mass. These are the things we use at the altar as the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, our great treasure. Each thing here is part of that celebration. The Roman Missal with the prayers, the patent, holding the host, the ciborium, also Holy Ghost. The chalices, pitcher, cruets, corporal, purificators. We use them all the time. We take it for granted. But they are a symbol. They're functional, but they're a symbol of the great reverence, the solemnity which we wish to celebrate the Eucharist. The Eucharist that is Jesus' gift to us.